Good evening, everyone. It's 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and it's time for us to open a 1945 D-Roll. There's our roll right there. You'd think I'd be tired by now, but I'm just getting ready to go. How about that? All right, so we don't have to do any special opening procedures. I don't need a tool or anything. All I have to do is pour these out because this is a nice tube of 1945D Lincoln Sense. We're going to start at this end, just like we usually do. The left end to my view. And I'm going to go ahead and pick out our first person for the role is going to be Jeff Dunn. Let's see who all is here. Randy, Eric Beyer, Tim Crowell, Timothy Morell, Steve Patat, Joe McBride. Steve, I'm doing just fine. How are you doing, sir? It's been a good day. Went out for a nice long walk in the nice spring heat. We're having a great day out there. Yeah, let me get us focused in to coin number one here. Did I see something on the eye already? No, I didn't. Okay. Looking around, we've got a number of double die obverses, double die reverses. We've got a number of repunch mint marks possible in this roll. It's going to be exciting to get started. Let's see here. That is not a doubled eyelid. It looks like a little die scratch or a form of die gouge. Looking for a marker to pick out on this one to kind of get us going as far as knowing how many different dies we've got going in here. I so far have not found a usable marker. I do have a there's a die dot on the bottom of the lapel and a die dot right behind the lapel. There's actually three die dots in a row right there you look at them so I'll use that for the marker for the obverse let's take a look at the reverse and see what's on the reverse nothing but a really nice bright red coin a little die, die crack right there in the lower right wheat there and that we are 100% just a really nice looking coin so that's gonna be coin number one is gonna go to Jeff Dunn Hello, Mr. Eubanks. Hoping to find some real goodies in here. Hey, Joe McBride, there's your name. Come up second. See what Joe McBride gets. Not seeing anything so far. We got ourselves another non-variety obverse. Let's see what kind of. Okay, I'm gonna take the two die dots in a straight line going north out of the one. One's out in front of the chin, and one's halfway back down to the one. A couple of pretty heavy die dots there. I think I can use those, but I'm gonna find another one just to be sure. A die crack coming or is a. Yeah, it's a crack coming straight up out of the back of the eye, over the brow, into the forehead. So we'll use that marker, too. Well, what do we have here? A normal, normal reverse. So that I see it so far. Yeah, it's a normal reverse. Okay. It's a very nice coin, though. Joe McBride gets himself a very nice coin for number two. These, these are gem coins here. These coins are actually very nice let's look at coin number three coin number three is going to go to farm dog there we go now you're talking that's a double die right there it's on his fat class six double die obverses let's see what can I what can I attribute this to let me go to uh just make it a little bit easier. I was already on Variety Vista, so let me just stay there. And go to Double Dies, DDO Listings, go to 1945D. 
And this is not number one. It is number two. This is DDO number two. Now look to be sure. DDO number two appears to have... It's got a die scratch under the S of trust. I'm not seeing it here. Perhaps... Let's see, mine is a later die state than the one noted. And the scratch is gone. So let's see what else I can find here for a marker. Looks like there's a little scratch on the inside of the 9. Going straight across. I don't see it. Not here. I'm pretty sure this is DDO number 2, though. The mint mark is in the right position. Everything looks right for it to be DDO number 2. I have something between the W and the E, maybe? No. Nope. It's very nice, though. It's a very nice one. Hmm. I have to steer away from die number two because the doubling isn't the same in Liberty. So perhaps this could be Die number 9 or 10. It's not number 10. It has to be die number 9. Let's see what die number 9 shows us. Mm. Hard telling. Oh, wait a minute. It's showing me a die crack in the forehead. Which I don't see the same thing here. And then also a die crack in the lower lapel. Which I don't see here. I'll have to do some better investigation on this later. I can't seem to pick out a die number for this now. But we're going to call this die number one for the roll. In this particular instance. I'm going to check this with a little bit of a Q-tip wipe real quick. To see if that's a die scratch on the nine. Or if it's a piece of something laying on the coin. Okay, it was something laying on the coin. So we don't have a die scratch off the side of the nine. Let's see what I can get off of here. So we'll know that we're looking at the same die next time we find one. I'm gonna pick out the difference between scratches on the coin and dry die scratches and stuff laying on top of the coin. Trying to find any gouges or anything that will give us a definite yes, this is the same die that we've already seen by markers. There's a couple of die scratches going north and south in front of the brow, in front of the forehead. That's not going to help us, though. Those things could be gone in a flash. Let's see. Well, not finding anything at all. No good markers. I'll find a few of them when I go to photograph it, but right now I'm not seeing anything. Our reverse is very late die state. It is not a double die, but it does have a die crack running through the E of E pluribus unum. So that gives us a good marker for that side to make sure that we have the same die pair next time we see that die. But that is a nice class 6 double die obverse. I'll go ahead and create my spot here to put double dies and repunch mint marks. And we're going to give this one to Farm Dog. It's going to be the very first double die in the roll. And there we go. All right, coin number four. So we do have nice double dies in this roll. I like that. Chuck Patillo. Chuck Patillo gets coin number four. And what do we have here? Okay. Not seeing anything of merit. Unless that thing in the middle of the D is indeed an RPM. I'm not sure if that is. I don't think it is. I'm going to go check the listings for RPMs and see if we have one in that direction. See if maybe this might be worth taking a better look at later. But it's not necessarily looking like an RPM to me because I think I see it sticking out of the side of the D. The right side of the D. It looks more like a die scratch or a flow line. 
see, 1945 D, I'd be looking for a D over D South, and I don't even see one. Ah, there is one, right here. Is that the right distance? No, it's not. But it does sort of match the appearance of the one that I have in my hand. But it's the only D over D South listed 1945 DRPM number 9. Let's zoom in on this and take a better look at it and see if we indeed think it's a RPM when we get closer. No, see when I get closer I can see that I was actually looking at a reflection on the inner wall of the upper part of the D. See how that now looks like it's doubled? It's not, it's just tall. That's all. So that's what we had. Thought it might be a double die, but I was wrong. It's been that way before. Once or twice. Alright, so let's keep moving on. Really nice clean fields on this coin. I mean, these things are superb looking. Very, very nice bright red 1945 Lincoln sent there. Take a look at the reverse. We do not have a double die on the reverse. So we're good to move on. Let's move on to the next coin in the roll. That's coin number four for Chuck Patillo. Now for coin number five. Coin number five. Hey, coin junkie. Coin number five will go to Adam Chambers. Let's see what Adam Chambers comes up with out of this roll. Yeah, it's another not not Got a greaser spot right up in the middle of the right field. And not. Let's see. This is the same die we just looked at. Not going to help us any looking at the same normal dies over and over again. We need to find some die varieties. That's what we're here after. But we do have nice high-grade coins. I'm very surprised at the quality of this roll to the extent that I really like it. Oh, you know what? This is that roll, isn't it, Joe? This is that roll that was purchased by Joe McBride. Joe McBride sent this in, had me do... That's right. <laughs> I was wondering for a moment where this came from. That is, this is the roll that came from Joe McBride. He purchased this roll, sent it in to us so that we could do a reveal on it and share it with everybody else. This is a very nice roll. Joe, you picked up a good roll, brother. Uh, steel coins known for 44 or 45? Yes, uh, 1944 has some steel cents known. Not 1945, however. 1945 is just a regular shell case bronze year. Shell case bronze meaning that the naval shell casings used during battleships during the war were made of brass or bronze, so they were returned back to the United States after the war or after they were used, and they were used in remanufacturing bronze to create Lincoln cents. And the tell about these is that they have just a li little tiny bit of gunpowder sulfur remaining in the metal, which turns them a slightly yellowish-orange color over time. And that's why they tone just a little bit differently than other Lincoln scents of other years. And it's just the ones from 1944 through 1947. And this one here goes to Joe McBride. And it does not appear that we have come up with anything special on this one. Let's take a look at the reverse and see if there's anything special on the reverse. And the reverse comes out just a late dice day coin. I'm not sure what you're saying, brother. Oh, oh, yeah. These came from Tim. That's right. 
They came from Tim Rathjen. This is the level of quality that Tim Rathjen deals in. Really nice coins. Oh, looky there. We got a nice big die crack. If this is a nice die, then you never know what we might have out of this. So I'm not necessarily going to expect this to be an original roll because Tim takes batches of coins of all the same date and mint mark, puts them through his machine, and pulls out the ones that are nicer and puts them in some rolls and puts ones that are spotted or otherwise in other rolls. This is one of his nicer rolls of 1945D, which is why these are gem coins. But because he does it the way he does and he runs them through his machine, I'm not sure that this is an original roll. It could come from an original batch of rolls, which means that the same dies will repeat over and over again. But it could just be a roll of 50 1945D coins, but we know that these have not been searched for die varieties because that is not what Tim Rathjen does. That's where we were headed. Man, my brain is not thinking straight today. My noggin ain't on straight. Jeff Dunn. What did Jeff Dunn get? Well, we got nothing there. The date in the mint mark area. Nothing on the eye. Going around to Liberty. We got nothing there. Flip your coin over and take a look at the reverse. And the reverse shows us nothing. That's it for that. We're ready to move on to coin number 10. Okay, coin number 9 now for Jeff Dunn. Coin number 10 is next in the process. Hi, Dennis. The source of this roll was Tim Rathjen up in Washington State. He runs auctions all the time on Lincoln Cent Auctions on Facebook. If you happen to be a member of Facebook, you should go join Lincoln Cent Auctions and take a look at the things being offered there. There's a plenty of competition there for really good rolls, really good coins, bags, rolls, all sorts of stuff. We've got a number of active sellers there now. Not as many buyers, which means it's a buyer's market. Sellers are willing to sell. All you have to do is go in and take a look. It's Lincoln Scent Auctions on Facebook. Look for Tim Rathjen when you get in there. All right, here we go. Justin Busman. Justin Busman gets one here. What does Justin Busman get? I've got to look at that eye again. Nope. Nothing. Thought maybe I was seeing something and twirl it around a little bit and find out that I'm not really looking at much of anything at all. But you have to look to know, right? Go around real quick on the reverse and see if we have anything for a double die reverse, and we do not. Bag and tag this one and moving on. Uh, Randy, just a little bit, but the date tends to be a little bit thick on 1945s just because. And so I've learned to skip over the ones that are really minor because they're indistinguishable from ones that are normal, normal. See, this one is definitely not normal. Now let's take this coin 11 that you just asked about i'm going to pull it back out and i'm going to show it to you next next side by side i can't say that for some reason <laughs> okay this is the new coin we just picked out this is the coin that came up right before it there's an obvious and very different appearance to the date i'm going to go back over to the fat one now i want you to memorize this take a good look at it this is a normal one and here's your double die 
You see how much thicker that double die is, especially on the 9, the 1, and the 9? Look at just the 1. Just think about how thick that 1 is and take a look at it. Now we'll move back over here. Look how thin that 1 is compared to the other. Okay? So this is a normal one. This is a double die. Once you learn these designs, they become very obvious to you when you just run into them in a roll. And so with, I mean, with the experience that I have looking at these things, I can kind of pick them out right away. I had an issue with 1937D the other day. We were looking, or 37S. We were looking at a 37S roll. I kind of had an issue when I was looking at them. I was thinking, oh, I'm not really sure if that's a spread that would count as a double die or not. And I pulled a whole bunch of coins out of the roll, and I ended up just stuffing them all back in the roll because they, they, they didn't have what they needed to have. This is... Let's see. Take a really good look at it. Yeah, this is one of the better double dies. I'm going to zoom in here. See that doubling at the top of the O? Now if we follow it over to the D... You can see the doubling there. And we should be able to make out... Yeah, there's a notch at the top of the D. See that notch? There's the O. Here's the G. The G also has doubling on it. There's the N. An I. I don't know if the L is going to show it. It could. But I'm kind of doubting it. Yeah, the L doesn't show anything. I come back up here. I, there's the doubling on the N. You can see it pretty well right there. Doubling on the N. You can see the doubling at the very top of the G. You can see it here on the O. I'm going to turn it around just a little bit more to get the shadow in there just right. There you go. You can see it right there on the O. Right there on the D. And it's at the top of the E. You can see it at the very top of the E over there. You can kind of see it on the top of the W if you know what you're looking for. And I don't think it's really going to show up much in trust. Oh, we do have a uh, we do have a, a bit of a notch at the bottom of the R. Let me turn this around so that we can see that R better. There you go. Let me make this a little bit brighter. You can see it right there at the bottom of the R. You can see it all over the R actually. R the U doesn't really show it well. The S doesn't show it very well, and the T doesn't. But the R does. I mean, the R shows it very well. So you have a relatively nice double die there. I'll have to look it up later. I do not believe this is the same as the other coin that we've already pulled out, but I'm going to check that coin again. I'm going to actually bring it out and take a better look at it. I'm going to look at the reverse of this coin first and see if I can pick out a good marker on the reverse of this coin before I pull out the other one so that we can compare markers. Yep, it's the same one. Remember that die scratch running through there, die crack running through the E? It's going to be the same die. This is die number one. I've pulled out one of these already. So this is our second example of die one for the roll. Jim Fletcher is going to get this one. Now we've seen that it has class six doubling in the date, and it's got class five doubling in the motto. That's coin number 12. Let's see how many more of these we can find. That's going to be nice. This is an exciting rule. I really like it. Justin Bussman. There's another one. Another one right there. Let's turn it around this way and see if we can see that doubling. Yeah, you can barely see it. I mean, it just looks kind of like a hairline right here. But if you know what you're looking for, you'll see it. If you don't know what you're looking for, it'll be a little confusing to you. But let me zoom in on that O again. I look at it now, and then I'm going to zoom in on it. See how well you can see that right there on the right, right there around the top of the O. Plus, that O is actually thicker than it should be. It may not be very noticeable if you don't really know what you're looking at. That's the one thing I don't like about this is that it doesn't have any kind of electronic focus. Your focus is a manual wheel that you have to turn with your finger. And sometimes it just doesn't want to behave well. Oh, you can see it really well in the W right there. Can you see it now? Right there in the center stick of the W. There it 
is on your R again. So there we go. We got a nice double die for Justin Busman. And I'm going to check one more time. I'm going to flip this over and take a look at the E on the E pluribusonum on the reverse to make sure there's a die crack headed through the middle of it. If there is, then we know we have a run of the same die, which says I'm an original roll. There we go. Definitely an original roll. We now have three of the exact same die in a roll. We know it's original. Or it's at least from the same original source. Hello, History Hunter. Mississippi. What part of Mississippi, my friend? I've been all through that state, north to south, east to west. Hattiesburg, right on Highway 45, 49, 49 or 45. You guys had a tornado there not too long ago, didn't you? Hope you did well there. 49, that's right. Oh, I've got Ari B. It should be Eric B. So this is, is that right, Eric? Yeah. Who do we have with an Eric? Eric Beyer. I don't know why without the C, it just looks so totally different. But it does. There's another one. Ding, 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 ding. We have another winner. Woohoo, this roll is chock-a-block full. Chock-a-block full of, there. Look at the R right now. You can see that doubling on the R very clearly right now. Maybe I finally found, yeah, I finally found the angle that we need to be looking at it. You can see it in the top of the G-O-N-D. There you go, definitely a nice double die. Well, anybody who got into this roll, you got a good chance of coming out lucky. These things are probably 30 to $40 coins. Yep, you got that die, die crack running through the E. By at least a $30 coin, we've run into four of them now. And Jessica watches this. She's going to be scratching herself, breaking out in hives. I wanted one! <laughs> and then you had their sweet coins, too. Andrew O'Neill. Andrew O'Neill gets coin number 15. Let's take a look at coin number 15 and see what it is. It is another example of that double die. It is another example of that double die. That is right. We have seen both of your coins already, haven't we, Joe? And you did not get one of those. Okay, look at the corner of the E, the top left corner of the E. You can see that doubling so well there. Well, Joe, we know where to go to get another roll, right? Ask Tim Tim if he can get you another one. I'll split it with you. <laughs> I'll buy. You fly. <laughs> All right, Andrew O'Neill gets another one. There we go. Who do we have so far? So far, people who are getting them are Farm Dog, Jim Fletcher, Justin Busman, Eric Beyer, and Andrew O'Neill. So we've got five of them. We've got five different people. Well, no, that's a good thing. like that. Hold the phone. <laughs> that's right. Never seen a good double die? Here, hold my beer. Deanne comes next. What does Deanne get? Bam, another one. <laughs> Boy, this is nice. This is real nice. Yeah. And you get a double die. And you get a double die. And you get a double die. Hello, Spike Ted Die Crack. And we're going to look for our crack through the E again. There it is. Die crack through the E shows us that we have the same die again. These are all gem coins. All very nice coins. Almost two hours from you. Okay. Well, I, I did know that 
there was some nasty stuff. I think there was a tornado in Hattiesburg a few years back, though, if, if I'm remembering correctly. It was in the northern side of Hattiesburg on 49 as you're headed out of town going north toward Jackson. I, th I think, if I remember correctly. All right, let's see here. Sing J. Okay, Sing J did not get one. So this is not one of them. Bored with all these DDOs. <laughs> yeah, now you can see, if you look at these letters, you can see how much thinner these are than what we've been looking at. Now you can see the difference. This is not a double die, and the other ones that we have been looking at are double dies. So you get the inexperienced eye to take a look at these, and they say, hmm, I don't really see anything. Well, you don't, because you don't know really what you're looking for. And that I can understand. It's, it's kind of like, you know, I don't know I'd say a, a king snake versus a coral snake. If you don't know the patterns and you don't understand the patterns of the colors, they look pretty much the same. Or a viceroy butterfly or a monarch butterfly. If you don't do any studying into the differences and really think about it and really look it through and practice and practice and practice, you never really know how to tell. Adam Chambers. What does Adam get? Not a double die. Not a doubled I. No RPM. What do we have on the reverse side? It's all right. Everyone gets a double die. And you get a double die. And you get a double die. You guys might want to congratulate Shannon McCord if he comes in. Shannon McCord was the lucky winner of a triple digit digital gram scale during my last broadcast just a couple of hours ago. He's going to get it with the rest of his reveals in the mail. He'll probably upgrade him to a priority small flight rate box class. And of course, I will be paying that postage. I'm not going to pull that TV stunt. How did you get it absolutely free? Only pay fourteen ninety five for shipping and handling. Right, exactly. That's not free, folks. All right. Sorry about that, Randy. <laughs> Got you, Aquinas. Not a double die. You know, let's take a look at the next one and see what we get. Well, Airy B again. So, Airy Buyer. <laughs> and we're back into him again. Just like that. Bam. <laughs> There's another one. Nice double die. Let's take a look at the other side here. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I get it. Yeah, I knew that the uh, the crash was closer to Louisiana than you are. Kind of back in the woods a bit. I saw a thing where a couple of guys, or a few guys, actually went back and uh, were metal detecting that area for bits and pieces of the airplane. And they found them. They found part of the instrument panel. Carabel. Carabelle will get this one, this double die. This double die is yours, Carabelle. Oh, that's awesome, Eric. And train one with Joe. Let Joe have one of them. That's awesome. You hear that, Joe? 
Eric's gonna let you take one of his double dice because he got two of them. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna do a little operation here just so that I know that it's been done. I'm going to take this stack of the double dies and okay Eric Beyer got two of them so far there's one there and there's one there so I'm gonna take this one and I am going to find one of these normal coins in here that has Joe McBride on it this one and I'm gonna switch the name tags and Joe McBride's name will come out of this one and Eric Beyer's name will come out of this one I'll put Eric in this one over here and put it up there and put Joe's name and this one. Now Joe has one of the double dies. That is very nice. I thoroughly enjoy being able to do that. Thank you so much. All right, Deanne. Deanne will pick up the next one. And the next coin is not a double die. Not a double die. Next time around, I want Randy to answer the next coin that I pull up I want him to answer is it the double die or is it not the double die you ready Randy as soon as I get out the next coin I want you to tell me if it's the double die or not the double die you're gonna learn how to attribute right here you with me Randy Okay, Randy's with me. This one's going to go to Kevin Speaks, but Randy's going to tell us if it's a double die. What do you think, Randy? Yes or no? Well, I wouldn't expect you to be able to tell me without looking at the coin. That would kind of be, well, magic. I don't expect magic. I just expect excellence. Note to get a normal coin out of this. It might have. It could be a doubled eyelid. I don't think so, but it could be. Let me bring up the doubled eyelids and take a quick look at them. Because I want to see for sure. I don't want to take any chances here. Well, it's not, it doesn't really look like an eyelid because as I look at the doubled eyelids, they all have a different angle than this does. So this isn't really a doubled eyelid. That's just a dot time. And nothing on the reverse of this one. So there we have it. Okay, Randy, you ready? This one's going to go to Starbucks. I'll put it down here and you can tell me. Double die or not, Randy? You going to say nope on this one? You'd be incorrect. This is one of the double dies. Look at the fat of the nine, the one, it's just that all that extra thickness. Now, if I brought it up here, of course, you can easily see it in the R of trust and the U and the S. You can really see it in trust there. Now you can see it really well in the we. Here it is in the G-O-D. Hello, Stephen Dallas. So, yeah, you definitely have a nice RPM here or a nice double die here. So this is for Starbuck. Let's look on the reverse and see if there's anything going on in the reverse that we need to discuss. Looks pretty much like the rest of them. It's late die state, normal, and rather gemmy appearing. It's a choice to gem BU coin. So that's for Starbuck. And our next one will go to Ray Longhi. Randy, you ready? 
Let's go, buddy. Is it yes or is it no? You think what? You think nope. You're correct. You're correct. This one has a mustache. It has a die crack. We've seen this die plenty of times. And it's one of the normal dies in the roll. Uh, Tim Morell, I would say yes, but that would send him to Annex because I don't think this is going to be a die. I do not believe this is going to be a die that will be recognized by PCGS. So they will not give you a die number on these, but Annex will. Um, and as for MGC, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. It's really difficult to tell one to the next what they recognize and what they don't. They have a list of dies that they do recognize on their website, and I do not believe any 1945 D double dies are on that list. All right, Sing J. Sing J. Let's give somebody else a turn. Let's see. History Hunter, you any good at you any good at die varieties? You want to tell me what you think? History Hunter, is this a is this a double die or not? Double die or no double die, History Hunter? These double dies probably around thirty about twenty to thirty dollars, maybe forty dollars a piece. No problem, Randy. I like I like working with people. I like getting you to learn this stuff. When you know this stuff, you know it. Nobody ever teaches you can't ever know. Okay, Stephen Dallas says it's not one. What about you, History Hunter? Do you say it is or not? You think this is a double die or not a double die? You can tell by the thickness of the one and the nine of the date, especially, but the four and the five are also thicker on the double die, and they're not so thick on the non-double dies. Okay, James says no. They're both correct. This is not a double die. This oh, this is the one that's got the big die crack across the forehead, and this one's not in quite as good condition. This is more like a choice BU. And we'll take a look at the reverse. I think we have outruled double die reverses on this particular roll. That's right. Larger hole in the four. So let's keep looking. Sing J gets himself a normal coin here. Nice red coin, though. All of these are nice red coins. They're all turning out pretty good. Okay, here's Mr. Patat. This is for Mr. Patat. What do you think here? What do you think about this one, History Hunter? You saying no on this one? Or was that for the last one? Thank you, Brian Put. Yeah, History Hunter, you probably should watch the other guys because they all say boom and yes and it is this is a double die it has extra thickness on the nine and the four of the date let me grab another one of these coins and I'm gonna go through this with you again real quickly so you can see it because I want you to be able to see it I want you to know what you're looking at okay this is the coin I just pulled okay this is the one I just pulled this is the coin right before it you see the difference in the thickness of the date okay so you've got a relatively thin 9, 4, and 5. And also look at the uniform thickness all the way around the 9. Okay. Then you come over here and see how much thicker that tail of the 9 is than the very top. And you can see that the center of the 4 is smaller. And the 1 is a lot thicker. And that curve on the bottom part of the 5 is a whole lot thicker as well. That crossbar on the 4 has some doubling on it too. But it's especially noticeable when you look at the 9. Just get a good image, get a picture in your head of what the 194 looked like on there. Just kind of open your eyes, take a good look at it, close your eyes, memorize it. Now open your eyes again. You'll see that there's a huge difference in the shape of the date digits. This is a normal coin. This one's the double die. It's DDO number 8, stage C. Thank you, Eric. 
You're pretty sure. <laughs> well, I mean, you're giving me a die number and a stage. I hope you're pretty sure. <laughs> All right, this one's going to Mr. Patet. So Steve Patet also gets himself a nice double die. And we're still in the game here. We've still got almost half the roll to go through. We've got another one for Steve Patet. Let's see what we have here. And it is not one of the double dies. This is not one of the double dice. This one has the die crack on the forehead. That tells you it's not one of the double dice. I know what the reverse on this looks like because it's not a double die, just like the other ones will be not a double die, but we don't know that there's not something else going on with the reverse on this coin, so we want to look at it anyway. Not looking for doubling on the reverse, but we're looking for things like struck throughs or something that was struck into the coin and left there a retained struck through. There's all kinds of things we could be looking for that would not affect the other side of the coin. Kevin. Kevin S. Not a double die for Kevin Speaks. Joe, get them all. You don't, I will. <laughs> Let's see here. I gotta get this thing in better focus. There we go. Not finding anything on this particular coin, Kevin speaks. Coin number 29. We're going to move on to coin number 30 now. Shannon McCord, our scale winner. Let's see if he gets to weigh this coin as a double die. He does. It is a double die. We have another one. F bam, bam, bam. Here it is again. Hey, Coin Dragon. You missed a little bit of the of the fun, haven't you? You came in just a little bit late. Wait till we get to the end of the roll. I'm going to count these things up. Everybody's going to wish they got in on this roll, that's for sure. In fact, I even would have liked to have bought a couple of my own spots on this one. All right, there's one for Shannon McCord. Shannon McCord's having a very good day, and he doesn't even know it because he hasn't been around yet. Midnight Silver Run. Let's see what we can do for Midnight Silver Run. Bam, there we go. There's another one. Midnight Silver Run gets himself a double die. This one's a little bit spotty, but it is a double die. You can see that doubling very well right there in the R of Trust. The R, U, and S of Trust. You can see right there in the E of We. And pretty well right up here in the G-O-D of God. And on the date especially. The date is the nice part. Our biggest marker on this is on the reverse of the coin, other than the attributes of the die itself, is right here. We've got a die crack running through the E of E Pluribusunum up to the tip of the left wheat. It is a strong one. It's a very nice one. We're talking about, oh, at least $30 coins here. At least $30 coins. And we have a couple of them. 21 for the roll. I hope we hit 21. That would be awesome. And we do not have one this time. It's kind of a hit or miss thing. Just like every other roll, any other time you look at them, you're going to hit with some, you're going to miss with others. But we still have to keep our wits about us, and we have to be watching for any of the other known double dies. And just keep watching, because you never know when you might run into the end of one tail and the beginning of another one. We might be missing double dies looking for one particular double die, and that's just not the way to do this. You need to look at every coin. 
Look at every coin obverse and reverse. Because if you don't, you could be missing stuff. We definitely don't want to miss anything. Oh, wait a minute. That's another musical reference. I can't do that. Don't want to miss a thing. 44S and 45S. You bought the other rolls? Awesome. Hey, here's another one that is not a double die. There's something stinging my foot. They have an ant down there or something. Just came in from outside. I was out in the yard with the dog. And they had an ant crawl on me and it finally bit me. Ouch, something bit me. There's another movie reference. I can't do movie references and I can't do musical references. That's that's like most of my life. Movie and music references. Ah. <sighs> So who was that? The music, uh, the the movie reference I just did. Ouch! Something bit me. I'm not saying it. Yep, that's right, history hunter. Said that as he was dragging Bubba out of the woods, and somebody shot him. And something just reached up and bit me right in the butt talks. I didn't know what it was. It wasn't until later the doctors told me I got shot. So who knows my musical reference that I did? Don't want to miss a thing. Here's Shannon McCord again. <laughs> I do that pretty well. Shannon McCord gets another one. Did he? Yeah, Shannon McCord gets two of the double dies now. Man, you guys are some lucky, lucky people. I am glad you came to my show. <laughs> History Hunter's right on the ball with that. He got that musical reference right, too. Man, nice double die. Nice double die. Love it. I love it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Nice reverse on this one. But man, what's really there? That double die for sure. Shannon McCord's second double die of the roll. He has two of them now. He's got one he can sell to me and one he can keep. Here's a Jim Fletcher. Jim Fletcher gets a not double die, but he already has one. So that doesn't hurt my feelings a lot. Not to give him another one, but... Well, hey, everybody's up up to speed. I tell you what, you guys are way ahead of me. My references are kind of, uh, I don't know, dusty, kind of old. <laughs> okay, no singing, I promise. I don't want our... I don't want our uh, video to be deleted like yesterday's was. Hello, Mint State Numismatics. Got one for Sing Jay here. Let's see what's going on here. And we have a not double die. Uh, definitely not double die, unfortunately, but we do have a nice gem coin here. These things are pretty. Kind of old? Yeah, kind of old. You know what? 1988 just happened yesterday. I mean, seriously. Well, I mean, you know, plus another 32 years, but it was yesterday. Um, is Tim McGraw's father Tug McGraw? No, Tug. 
He was a baseball player. Is that right? Yep, there we go. Justin Busman. Justin Busman, what does Justin Busman get? A normal coin here. We do have a normal coin. This is one with the big die crack running across the forehead. You were in Okinawa in 88. 88, I was in Germany. Der Bundesrepublik Deutschland. Ich habe eine deutsche Frau verheiratet. Und dann, wir haben zusammen zurück nach den Amerikanischen Staaten gekommen. Vereinigte Staaten. Amerika. Starbuck. Starbuck. Gets a not double die this time around. Looks like we've only got about three or four different dies in this entire roll. Germany was 2,000 for you? I was already out by 2,000. I did my time. Did 10 years. I was in from 86 to 96. Spent the first four of it in Germany. I spent the last six stationed in Oklahoma. However, I spent probably about half my time stationed in Oklahoma actually in the Middle East either in Turkey or Saudi Arabia or in other countries Andrew O'Neill Black Cloud Mining not a double die not a double die B4 B4 N23 N 23. Just thought I'd throw that in for good measure. Oh, 75. You were 14 in 1988. You're just a piker. You're a little puppy. Look at you. Still wet behind the ears. Did someone ask how to get in on these? Who was it? That dog down there barking at the TV. Did somebody ask? Yeah, Brian Pritt did. I'm sorry, Brian. You did ask. Well, the way that you get in on these is that you show up at the auctions on Tuesday nights. Now, I'm not having one this coming Tuesday because it's my week off. I always take the first week of every month off. But the second week of the month on Tuesday, Tuesday. I think it's going to be the 12th of May. We'll have another auction. And toward the end of the auction, auction starts at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Toward the end of the auction, if you're a registered bidder, which is absolutely free to do, and I'll give you instructions in a few moments how to do that, we offer these reveals toward the end of the show. And let me tell you what, it's a feeding frenzy. It's like a bunch of piranhas on a piece of meat. I announce what we're going to be doing, and they're sold out inside of 5 to 10 seconds. Seriously. So what I do is I go in there. I'll put in chat. Hey, we're getting ready to do this. Here, roll. This is a you know, reveal number 130. This is a 1945D roll, an original uncirculated roll that's in a tube, and it came from Joe McBride and was sent to me from Tim Rathjen up in Washington. And uh, we're going to do these at, our, what was it, $5 a coin or $6 a coin, something like that. And uh, as soon as I enter into the chat to go, I want you guys to start giving me your numbers of what you want then. It's going to be a limit of two coins per person, five, six dollars per coin. I think it was five dollars a coin. And as soon as I hit enter and you see my information in the chat, you got to be on the ball. You got to be ready to hit your key right then. I mean, this is like a video game fast. It's hair, hairline trigger fast. That's right. It's worse than Black Friday. That's right, man. I got fat ladies tripping all over each other just to get into these rolls. And so you get in on the roll, and when I do, 
is I make these flip inserts right here that give us the numbers of the coins in the roll. And then I make one of these name cards for everybody who gets into the roll. If you buy three spots, you get three name cards. And they go inside this little cute little bag I've got here that's all nasty and dirty and needs to be washed. But then the name card goes here while I'm opening the roll out, give you your coin, and we look at your coin, we discuss your coin. And then when we look at your coin and say, well, this isn't a double die, but it is a pretty nice looking normal 1945D Lincoln cent. We just looked at this die because I just saw this by Ted die crack before. And we kind of, you know, shoot the breeze a little bit. We talk about your coin, then your coin goes in a flip. Well, here's the story on that. If your coin is not a die variety, it's just sent to you. Just exactly as I put it in a flip, put your name in there with it. Just like this. Goes inside that flip. Turn it around this way. Flip your name over, put it in there. So you got coin number 43 goes to Paul Hampton. And I send the coin to you. But if you get one of the die varieties, I'm going to make a brand new flip insert for you where I will attribute the number of that die variety. And if I need photographs of that particular variety, the nicest coin in the roll for photographs will come out. Randy, you ready, buddy? Bam. There you go. There you go, Randy. But then you, you get that coin in the roll. And so Randy gets this one. If this one happens to be the nicest coin in the roll, I'm going to photograph it. It's going to become a plate coin. Plate coin means that I use that coin. I used that coin for a publication. That very coin was used to show everyone in the world what that die looks like on my website. So you get that coin, and I sign your flip insert saying that you got the plate coin. I send you that coin, then you can have it holdered, or you can do whatever you want to do with it, sell it or whatever you want to do. And that coin ends up being the special coin that was photographed for the website. Now. In addition to that, if it is a new die, if it's a brand new identifier, if it's a brand new catalog number that I have to put into the catalog to show this die variety, which in this case I probably won't have to, but in some cases I do, then you also get new listing on your flip insert, and I tell you when that new listing occurred. So right now it would be 05-20, which would be May of 2020. So Randy gets himself a double die. We're up to coin number 45. Now we only got six left. I'm glad I can make your day. Now we got Carabel again. Carabel got the first double die out of this roll. She does not get another one this time. Not another one this time. This one's got the die crack on it. That's not a double die. So be sure that you show up to our auctions on Tuesday nights. I've got a whole lineup of absolutely gorgeous rolls, including 1943, 1937, 1937D. I've got uh, 1940S. I've got 1947D. Um, I've got some in the 50s. I've got 54D, 53D. I've got a number of rolls. Um, I've got some 69S. I've got some 1970S. I've got some 1972. Uh, Eric, I probably will, but I really need to get caught up on a lot of stuff. And I love doing the reveals, but man, they take up so much time. And they take up so much time that I need for other things. I'm, I'm probably going to bow out of doing reveals this week. I may do one or two just to stay in practice and, well, just to give us all something to do. But I, I may not do any at all. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'll let you guys know by I'm, I'll let you know by Sunday. I'll have Jessica tell you one way or the other. That'll be tomorrow afternoon. I'll make a decision, and we'll figure it out. John Brandon Bow did not score a double die this time around. Let's see who else is in here? Adam Connor. Adam Connor, did you score a double die? No, sir. Not a double die. He got something going on with his eye. That's a big old hit. Right in the middle of the head. Hmm. 
When's your birthday, History Hunter? September 17th. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He got a black eye. Gash in the head. All right, well, that's coin number 47. Can't find anything on that one. I've moved forward to coin number 48. We got three coins left in the roll. Let's hope all of them are double dice. We got Chuck Patillo. Chuck Patillo comes next. Here's Chuck Patillo's coin. This one is a double die. So we do get a double die here. This one's a little spotty, but it's still one of those double dies. Very nice one. I hit Timothy Morrell's birthday, September 17th. Oh, now you know. I'll never forget that. <laughs> yeah, this one turned out to be just a little bit more of a spotty coin than I wanted it to be, but it is one of the nice double dies. That's right. June 2nd, huh? So we're, we're barely a month away from your birthday. Maybe by the time your birthday comes around, you'll be able to get in on some of these rolls, and you'll get some really cool, really cool stuffs. Here's coin number 49. Eric Beyer again gets a double die. He has a third one now, but he gave his second one. He gave one to Joe McBride, so now he has two again. A little bit of a struck through right there in the... <laughs> Eric, I bet your birthday's today, isn't it? Is it really today? Drank beer and hung out with your gorgeous wife. Well, that's what we do on our birthdays, right? <clears throat> it is your birthday, and you're 55 years old. Well, congratulations, Eric Beyer, old man. You got yourself two double dies to go home with, and you were able to give Joe McBride a gift. That's got to be pretty awesome. Who gets this last coin? Jim Fletcher. Jim Fletcher gets the last coin in the roll. Let's see if he gets a double die. Yes, he does. This is indeed a double die. And happy birthday, Eric. We have to come up with a Copper Coins birthday song. I wouldn't want to sing happy birthday on a show. Although that whole debacle's been dispelled by now, I'm sure. All right, let's see. What do we got here? We got ourselves a pile of normal coins, but they're all nice red uncirculated coins. Some of them are gems. Some of them are near gems. But that's what they look like right there. And we have this. A here for two unspeakable amount of double dies from 1945. I'm going to put this in a position where you can see the numbers. There's a 21. That goes to Carabelle. 16 goes to Deanne. 15 goes to Andrew O'Neill, 14 to Eric Beyer, 13 to Justin Busman, number 12 goes to Jim Fletcher, number 3 to Farm Dog, number 20 to Joe McBride, number 24 to Starbuck, number 27 to Steve Patat, number 30 to Shannon McCord, number 31 to Midnight Silver Run, number 35 to Shannon McCord, Number 44 to Randy. Number 48 to Chuck Patillo. Number 49 to Eric Beyer. And number 50 to Jim Fletcher. You got some people in here that got two. That's just awesome, folks. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We've got 17 double dies. We did get close to your number, didn't we? You said, what, 22? 
or 21 or 22 and we got 17 17 double dies in here now let's do a little bit of quick math 17 double dies if these things were to actually sell let's just say that they could sell at 35 dollars a coin which i do not think is unrealistic 35 dollars a coin we just pick six hundred dollars worth of coins out of this roll five hundred ninety five dollars now say the rest of these are worth five dollars a piece then we've picked seven hundred dollars worth of coins out of this roll so there we go that's why i do this folks this is exactly why i do this i can't be closer to being on top of the world right now this is absolutely fun Sure, I'd have had fun if I'd gotten this roll myself and I'd found all 17 of those coins for myself. Sure, that would be fun, but it's a whole lot more fun when I can share them with everybody else. All right, so I can hang around for a little while longer because I don't have anything else going on this evening. If anybody wants to stick around and ask a question or two or have a little bit of chit-chat or whatever it come what may... I need to work on the 1949S roll. Once I'm done with that 1949S roll, I think I'm just about ready to send some pretty hefty packages to a bunch of people. And anyone who happens to be here who has asked, I have not done, uh, let's see. I have to look at it here real quick, hang on. What's the DDO number? I believe it's DDO number eight. That's what Eric said he thinks it is. We also got to play DDU or not. That's correct. We're going to do that. I'm going to let you guys do the attributions. I'm just going to be the arms and legs of it. Let's see. Let me go into my inventory here real quick. See what I have and have not shipped. So I want to be able to show you guys or tell you guys anyway. Not show you, but I want to be able to tell you what has been sent out and what has not been sent out. So... Let me get sort or sort by invoice number. Come on. There we go. Sort by invoice number. If your invoice number is twenty two forty one or later I have not sent any single coins to you if it's 2241 or later I've not sent any single coins to you anything from 2241 on up in the last let's see what's the last invoice that I sent 2404 so 2241 to 2404 I have sent all of your boxes all of the boxed roll groups, but I have not sent single coins. So that would be any of the roll reveals from, let's say, uh, 111 on up. Anything from 111 on up, I've not shipped. That includes the 36 s roll the 37 s roll the 49 s roll 54 d 70 s 50 d any of those that you were in on i have not shipped those yet because i am trying to finish the last bit of it i don't want to ship two four dollar packages to you and have to ship and have to charge you another four dollars for shipping when i could ship them together if you're just patient about it so the boxes have been sent all of the roll boxes have been sent but the individual reveal coins like these have not been sent. I'm going to finish this 49S roll. It should be finished up today. And then I'm going to start sending out all of these reveals. So just to let you guys know that, I'm going to spend all day tomorrow working on that. So the auction tomorrow, that's going to be a Jessica auction. She sells some of my inventory on the weekends while I'm working on my inventory, trying to get more inventory together. I've passed a bunch of my inventory to her, and she runs auctions on the weekends, and I run auctions on Tuesdays. 
They're both copper coins auctions, but since she lives in Iowa, the inventory that she has is shipped from Iowa, and the inventory I have is shipped from North Carolina. So we can't combine shipping on Iowa and North Carolina orders because, well, naturally, they're shipping from two different places. But we are the same company. We are the same, uh, basically, same channel, the same company. It's all copper coins. Did you miss the fun, Jim? I thought you were here the whole time. Uh, the Facebook group I mentioned earlier is Lincoln Scent Auctions. You go to Lincoln Scent Auctions. I'll let you in there. I am the owner of that group. And that's where Tim Ratchin and Blaine Newpert and some of the other people who are professionals in this industry sell rolls and bags of coins you can get yourself some really good deals in there from blaine and jim fletcher i mean not jim fletcher jim tim rathjen not jim fletcher um there's there's other people in there selling too and then some of them are good and some of them i'm kind of kind of question a little bit but they're not breaking any rules so Well, that is it, isn't it? 1945D, DDO number 8806. I'll teach you a little bit about that die number. 806. The 8 means it's the 8th known die. The O means it's the obverse. And the 6 means that it's a class 6 double die, which is a distended hub double die, which I don't agree with 100% because it's not a 6. It's a 5 plus 6, but still. Um, 2019 p i have like 400 rolls of 2019 p so if you want me to do a 2019 p reveal i can and i will do that if you want me to i'm more interested in doing the wheat sentence and the older stuff and the stuff that has a better chance of having high high value coins uh yes timothy morrell i did get your i did get your message I will have to reply back to you. I've got a whole bunch of messages in uh, in my email that I need to reply back to. And I'm probably going to spend part of the day tomorrow doing that after I get these reveals done and get everything packaged up and ready to go Monday. I'm probably going to have, uh, what, 75 packages or more going out on Monday. So it's going to be a pretty busy day tomorrow. But I will get back to you on that email. And yes, I do have 55 rolls. And yes, I can sell you 55 rolls. Well, there's Mr. Dowdle. You missed the you you missed the boat on the on the big ones here. Oh, it was awesome. It's absolutely awesome. I'm gonna break out one of the coins here and I'm gonna show it to you. I'll get carabells out. That was the first one I found in the roll. Check this out, James. Nice fat class six, 1945 D. Now take a look at this. You get up here. Look at the doubling in trust. That's not class six doubling. That's class five doubling up there. It's got notching. See the notching at the top of the E and the top of the W. Notching at the top of the D. Yeah, we didn't just find one of these either, stone cutter. We got seventeen of them in this roll. Yeah, we got enough to paper the bathroom floor. <laughs> 17 of them. Wow. Found us a few hundred dollars worth of coins in this roll. Like it that way. Uh, this coming week, if I do reveals, I'll be doing a 1943P. I'll be doing a 1941P. The ones that I'll be doing, I probably won't do, but two or three, maybe four reveals. I'll run a show probably Tuesday evening to sell them i won't be doing a regular uh i won't be doing a regular auction but i will be probably doing a reveal show where i'll sell three or four rolls not very many and i don't plan on doing any lower value rolls i plan on only doing the higher value rolls because i i just i don't want to do a whole lot of stuff next week beyond working on the inventory i need to be working on that will give me a better opportunity of being ready to 
come back with a vengeance the following week and have plenty of inventory to go around. So I'm going to go ahead and take off. I'm going to go ahead and get things ready and work on this 1949 S-Roll because I really want to get it done. I just want to get it out of here. 15 different RPMs in that roll. 15 different ones. It has been the biggest headache of a roll I've ever had. And it has really, really put a bind in my process of getting things done and getting things out of here. So I'm going to get it over with tonight. I'm going to get it over with tonight. I'm going to have a really good sleep tonight. I'm going to get up tomorrow. I'm going to package a whole bunch of packages. Thank you, Randy. You have a great night too, brother. I'll see you guys later. I'm going to go ahead and take off now. Go down and grab something to drink and move on. I appreciate it. Everybody take care of yourselves and take care of each other. And I'll see you next time.